All right, let's break this down, because this is actually way more interesting than it sounds at first. Right now, there's a big fight happening behind the scenes between Apple, Qualcomm, and MediaTek, and the battlefield is TSMC's next big chip tech, the 2 nanometer process. TSMC has two versions of 2 nanometer. One is called N2, and the improved one is called N2P. Think of N2 as the first version, and N2P as the polished version, that runs a bit faster and a bit better. Apple moved fast, really fast. Reports say Apple has already booked more than half of TSMC's early N2 production for its next chips, the A20 and A20 Pro. These chips will power future iPhones, and that leaves Qualcomm and MediaTek in a tight spot. They are planning their first 2 nanometer chips too. Qualcomm has the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 6, and MediaTek has the Dimensity 9600. Both are expected in the second half of next year, but if Apple already grabbed most of the N2 supply, Qualcomm and MediaTek would basically be fighting over scraps. So what do they do? They switch lanes. Instead of N2, they are now rumored to be using N2P. This rumor comes from a Weibo leaker called Fixed Focus Digital Cameras. This guy is pretty well known, over 2.4 million followers, and he has a decent track record. Funny thing is, earlier he said this switch would not happen, now he's saying it will. So yeah, take it with a grain of salt, but still, it's worth talking about. Now you might be thinking, why even bother switching to N2P? The performance gain is only 5%, that doesn't sound like much, right? But here's the key point. When you're already at the very top, even a tiny gain matters a lot. That extra 5% can mean higher CPU speeds, it can mean slightly better battery life, it can mean winning benchmarks by a small margin, and in marketing, small wins matter a lot. Another big reason is that TSMC said the design rules for N2 and N2P are basically the same, so for chip designers like Qualcomm and MediaTek, switching from N2 to N2P is not a huge headache, it's almost like a smooth upgrade instead of starting from scratch. Now let's talk about why Qualcomm and MediaTek are so desperate to catch up. Look at what's happening right now with current chips. The Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 and Apple's A19 Pro are both made on TSMC's 3 nanometer N3P process. Same factory, same tech, but the results are very different. In Geekbench 6, Qualcomm's chip needs around 61% more power to beat Apple's A19 Pro. That is a massive gap. Yes, Qualcomm can win in raw performance sometimes, but it burns way more power doing it. That hurts battery life and efficiency. MediaTek is in an even worse position. The Dimensity 9500 showed the weakest performance per watt in similar tests. Apple, on the other hand, is playing a very smart game. Their efficiency cores are crazy good. Apple redesigned them so they give up to 29% more performance without using more power compared to the previous generation. That's huge. It means Apple doesn't always need to push the big cores hard. The phone stays fast and efficient at the same time. So when we talk about N2P, it's not just about speed, it's about closing that efficiency gap. Even if N2P only gives 5% better performance over N2, that could still help Qualcomm and MediaTek reduce how much extra power they need to compete with Apple. Another thing people forget is clock speed. Higher CPU frequency is one of the main reasons Qualcomm and MediaTek want N2P. If the chip can safely hit higher clocks without overheating or killing efficiency, that's a big win. Single-core performance goes up, multi-core performance goes up, and benchmarks look better. Now there's also memory and storage. Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 6 and Dimensity 9600 are expected to support LPDDR6 RAM and UFS 5.0 storage. On paper, that gives them a bandwidth advantage over Apple's A20 and A20 Pro, at least initially. That means faster data movement, quicker uploading, and smoother multitasking. But again, paper specs don't always translate perfectly to real life. Apple is very good at squeezing the most out of what they have. So will N2P suddenly make Android chips beat Apple easily? No, not at all, but it might help level the playing field a bit. Instead of being far behind in efficiency, Qualcomm and MediaTek could get closer. Instead of needing crazy high power to win benchmark tests, they might do it more cleanly. One more thing to remember is supply. 
even if performance was exactly the same, N2P gives Qualcomm and MediaTek peace of mind. Apple won't be eating up all the wafers. Production will be smoother, fewer delays, more chips for Android flagships. That alone is a big reason to move. Now about the leaker drama. Fixed focus digital cameras first denied this whole N2P switch idea when another leaker, Digital Chat Station, mentioned it. Now he's backing it. So that tells us one thing very clearly. Plans are changing behind the scenes. Chip companies adjust strategies all the time based on supply, cost, and competition. Nothing's locked in until mass production starts. So for now, this is still a rumor. A very interesting one, but still a rumor. The big takeaway is this. Apple is still ahead in efficiency. Qualcomm and MediaTek know this, and instead of sitting still, they are trying every small advantage they can get. N2P is one of those small but important moves. Whether it's enough to truly challenge Apple's A20 and A20 Pro, we'll only know when real devices hit the market and real tests are done. Until then, don't believe hype, don't believe benchmarks alone, and definitely don't believe paper specs. But yeah, this chip war is getting intense, and next year is going to be very interesting.